Hello, everyone. I want to really quickly ask you guys a question. Who in here was working before 2008? Please raise your hand. All right. Now, I want to pick somebody as a volunteer. Keep your hands up. Who in here had a 401k in 2008? One person. Perfect. Do you, <laughs> do you mind if I use you as an example? Fine. Okay. In 2008, did your uh, 401k take employment like everybody else did? Yes. It did. Okay. Now, I'm not going to ask you no. Um, <laughs> My parents specifically talked to me about their 401k and told me that it dropped about 42%. That's insane. In the course of about a year and a half to two years. Now, do you guys specifically trust the opinions of Time Magazine? Yes or no? No, you don't? All right, well then don't, don't listen up. Um, <laughs> so Time Magazine's uh, editor-in-chief, um, Richard Stengel, specifically talked about the 401k and described it as a financial flop. He talked about it and specifically said that the 401k was designed 30 years ago by Congress, not by any means as a way of uh, saving for retirement. The 401k was designed as a tax dodge for executives. So why in the world are we using it today as a way of retiring, as a way of a retirement fund for us? I don't personally know, and I don't personally want to know. I don't have any investments in a 401k anymore. <clears throat> if I told you that there's a way that you can alter your, in your um, savings going forward for your retirement, would you believe me in something that's not a 401k? Something that would not dip in the market if the market dips, like it did in 2008? And at the same time, would you believe me if I told you that it was income tax free? Now I see you're shaking your head. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Um, Maybe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's Index Universal Life Insurance. That's what I'm talking to you about today. I'm gonna go over a few things with you. First and foremost, what an Index Universal Life Insurance policy is what the benefits are for you, and then how you can actually implement it in your life. So what does an index universal life insurance policy specifically protect for you? Three things. One, it protects you dying too soon. Two, it protects you dying too late. And three, it protects you if you get sick along the way. So I know you're all focused on the second one, and we'll get to that. How can you die too late? <laughs> dying too soon. An index universal life insurance policy has that standard life insurance policy death benefit. So if you die, your beneficiary does receive a cash settlement, tax-free. The second part, dying too late. It's not possible to die too late, of course. However, what this is, is specifically, we talk, I'll talk to you later about the accumulation value of your policy and how that's what you take out of at the end of your policy when you retire. You cannot outlive those funds. So like I mentioned, the funds are there and they'll continue to grow with you and you're not able to outlive those funds. And lastly, it protects you from getting sick along the way. What that is, is specifically there's this thing called living benefits that you have with your universal life policy. What that is, is when you uh, get sick with some sort of either a fatal disease or cancer that's treatable, you're able to exercise this option and get a lump sum cash, tax free again, that you can use for anything and anything that you choose. It could be for your medical expenses. It can be for your mortgage if you need to pay off your mortgage so that you can afford your medical expenses. It can be for a vacation if you want to just relax, honestly. What this is designed for is to allow you to focus on you, focus on getting better when you're sick, not focus on the financial hardship that being sick can cause. And so what are the specific components of an index universal life insurance, or as I will refer to it as an IUL policy? First, you pay a premium. You have to pay a premium in order to have any kind of insurance. That premium goes to a couple different places. It goes to uh, the, the fees that are associated with it, which of course, they all, they all have their fees. Um, with the IUL specifically, the fees after 10 years go away. You don't pay them again. These are actually policies that you're supposed to have with you for your life. So you have the policy for 30, 40 years, if not longer, you're only paying fees on 10, or 10 years out of those 30 or 40. After the fees, it goes into the specific death benefits, so the actual life insurance part. And then lastly, it goes into what I mentioned before, this accumulation value. The accumulation value is something that is my actual favorite part of these policies. So which line would you guys prefer in this graph? The red line or the blue line? Blue. Blue, blue of course. What is the red and what is the blue? Well, the red is the S&P 500, and the blue is your index uh, accumulation value. So as I mentioned, you put money in on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, into this accumulation value, and it grows over time. It's guaranteed never to drop. So as I mentioned, between right over here in the 2007 and 2009 range, that, that 2008 number, the S&P dropped significantly. Your IUL stayed the same. Your IUL went nowhere. Okay, so that's the crucial part. It can never fall. The accumulation value can never fall. I can't express that enough. I'm gonna give you a quick example. 
um, of another part of the accumulation value. That's where you can actually borrow money from this value. You borrow against your accumulation value at any point in the, uh, the, the life of the policy. As you guys know, I like Honda. So I'm gonna give you an example of, you wanna buy a car, you wanna buy a nice new Honda Civic, and you need $20,000 for that car. If you've been putting in money into this account, all fees and all interest aside, uh, for about 10 years, you've got $50,000 in the account, you put in $5,000 a year. At year 10, you take out 20,000. Your accumulation value never drops. As I mentioned before, it cannot drop. So you're earning interest on that 50,000, not on 30,000. Now here's the best part, you have two options. You can either pay that money back, or you can leave that money alone and just bought the car, use the car, forget about paying the money back. What the two options do, if you pay the money back, you have to pay a small uh, interest rate on the money. It's about 4% is the average. But here's the catch, it's a good catch for you guys. You're paying 4% on this borrowed loan, but the, uh, the stock market and the, the indexed um, S&P is making approximately 8%. That's the average that it's, been, it's made over the past 30 to 40 years. So you're making, 8% and you're paying four. So you're essentially you're netting 4% on the money that you are, are, are borrowed and you're paying back. If you choose not to pay it back, however, the only thing that happens is your death benefit goes down by the amount that you didn't pay back. So in this example, your death benefit was 500,000. If you don't pay it back, your death benefit is 480,000. However, if you pay it back again, your death benefit would go back up to the 500. So I talked to you about the premium paid, the accumulation value over time. And the last part is the tax-free income you earn when you retire. So what is that specifically? And to illustrate this to you, because I can go on forever with all this information, I'm gonna show you my personal life insurance policy. Now my dad sells these, and he bought this for me actually a week and a half ago, it went through. All right, so he's putting $5,200 a year into this policy for me for two years, so $100 a week. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm 25 years old. So as we progress down here, I wanna specifically focus on this 65 year old mark. That's when I plan on retiring. So what's my cash value uh, from the policy? I'm gonna take out $165,000 a year every year when I retire. It's a lot of money, okay? And if you look right here at the premium outlay, this is how much I've put into the policy over the course of 41 years. So 41 years in, I've put $213,000 into the policy and every year after that, I take out $165,000 in the form of a loan. So after two years, you're covering that plus 100 grand. So it's, it's an enormous amount of money that you're actually able to take out based on the investment that you've made over the course of your life. And as you can see here, the accumulation value never goes down. It starts low uh, based on what you put in and then it just increases exponentially over time. And your death benefit is another interesting part here. Because remember how I told you when you take out a loan against your um, accumulation value, your death benefit goes down. These are all considered loans, the amount that you take out from year to year. So your death benefit slowly goes down, right? But as you can see, my death benefit from, from your, uh, when I'm 74 to when I'm 90 has gone back up. Why? The reason is because the money that I'm taking out of the policy, that 165000 a year, is actually more than, or is less than what the policy itself, the accumulation value, is making on the market. So your death, uh, your death benefit is going up every year. So what are the three different options you can use an IUL policy for? First and foremost, you can use it for retirement, as I mentioned to you before. You take out that money every year in the form of a loan. Next, you can use it for college funding. And this, I know, my parents are gonna use this the second that I have a kid. The, the second I, I, my wife gives birth in the future, they're gonna buy my son or daughter a life insurance policy, and I know that. Because what happens and how you're gonna use this is you buy the life insurance policy when the baby's born and you let that policy grow, you, you feed money into it over time. And by the time that the child turns 18, their life insurance policy has grown significantly. And you're able to fund their college with this policy. You take out the loans from the policy, and you pay them back at a very very small rate, 4%. My personal college loans right now are at, at least 6%, six and a half, so they're much higher. And God knows in 18 plus, however long it takes me to have a kid, however, however long that's gonna be, what those loan uh, percentage rates are actually gonna be. Then, when the, the child graduates at 22, they have uh, the, the life insurance policy is handed over to them, and they have an immediate jump start on their personal retirement. So, from the second they graduate college, they've got this huge amount of money that they're just going to let grow over time to be their policy. Now, I mentioned to you before how much uh, how much money I'd be taking out at 65. That's also only putting in 100 a week. 
So say I get a really good job and I just want to stash a ton of money away. That's possible, and then at the end, I'm going to have a lot more uh, to take out. Okay, so the last thing is this personal banking. That's very simply put, you can kind of collect everything that we had talked about today and use it as your own personal bank. Use the money that you fund in, take it out when you so desire. Okay, so what did I talk to you about today? I talked to you about the different aspects of the universal life insurance policy. Uh, the, the accumulation value, how it can never go down. Um, I talked to you specifically about how you can use it to fund college uh, for your retirement and lastly as your own personal bank. What I want you guys to do for me today is I want you to specifically go home, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, and think about your personal retirement funds and let me know um, how, you, how you have analyzed them. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to my father's company, Ando Financial, Anthony and Donna, my parents. Um, and here's their phone number. I'm actually going to hand out business cards to you guys. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to them uh, with those.